Good day everyone and welcome back to the X Explorer for another video. It's Monday and I promise that on Monday I'll be back with another video. I'm Yankee Oscar 6 Delta X-Ray Echo and today we are back on VLF. Uh, some while back I uh, built this nice VLF receiver which is actually called Spherix receiver because we're listening to natural sounds generated by nature, by earth. And um, I really like this one. I took it with me up in the mountains and I loved uh, listening uh, to the sounds of nature over there just because I don't have electricity poles over there. I don't have any radio interferences. So um, yeah, you get nice and clean sounds um, um, up in the mountains away from, um, from all this uh, city uh, stuff. So um, while I was doing research for this project, I found another one, a very interesting one. And uh, today that's what we're going to build, another uh, Spherix receiver. But this one is very simple. It only has three components. You have a resistor, a capacitor and a JFET transistor. And the receiver doesn't need any batteries. You just plug uh, the audio output uh, straight into um, an audio recorder and you are ready to record the sounds generated by nature. Of course, if your audio recorder has an audio output for headphones, you can also listen to the sounds at the same time. So without wasting any time, let's get to work and build this very simple receiver. And hopefully it's going to work because I have no idea. But I found the, the article and I'll a link in the video description to that uh, article. But I found this uh, schematic and I really wanted to try it for a long time. But of course, I'm not going to continue without saying thank you to my friends at PCB Way for always supporting and sponsoring the DX Explorer YouTube channel. They have great PCB prototyping services, PCB assembly, SMD stencils, CNC, 3D printing and a lot more services available for you. Uh, again, I'm going to uh, bother you with uh, projects that I'm working on and if you're happy with the uh, projects uh, that I'm presenting here on the YouTube channel, feel free to go over to the projects page on the, um, on the PCB way website where I'm presenting and I'm posting all the projects that I'm uh, having here on the YouTube channel. And if you like to order any PCB boards from there, feel free to do so and always remember they also have PCB assembly services in case you don't feel like heating up a soldering iron um, you can actually buy the assembled version of each uh, project that I'm presenting over there again don't forget about the special um, anniversary 11 years anniversary of PCB way uh, they have a special event over there I'll link to that one as well in the video description you get uh, a bunch of uh, coupons a lot of discounts a special discounts for services and uh, much more than that so if you don't have an account for PCB way have a look in the video description you find another link that you can click and register for your new account and you'll get a discount on your first order as I'm always saying PCB way is the way. So this is the entire receiver. It's very very simple. Uh, here we have the antenna BNC on top, the ground connection on the bottom like a banana connection and the audio output jack uh, that goes to our recorder. It's a bit windy so I apologize for the sound. I hope you can hear well. Now the spike uh, that goes into the ground I'm using an aluminum spike, but uh, it's just to play around. You can use better grounding if you want. This one fits perfectly into the banana plug from the receiver. You can use a cable uh, with a banana connected with an alligator clip to a proper ground connection. And this is the telescopic antenna that I'm using. And then I place the spike into the ground and let's see what results we can get with this receiver but before we do that I want to talk a little bit about what I'm using to record the audio because somebody asked me in one of the comments from YouTube about uh, about this so I have this uh, old Tascam recorder that I purchased many years back to record sound for documentary films and uh, yeah, I still have it around, so I thought I should put it to use in amateur radio. 
so it has uh, two XLR inputs and this stereo input on channel 3 and 4 so you can use any sound recorder that you have available either that uh, it has mono or stereo input I'm using this one and the good part about this recorder is that in the menu it allows me to change between high impedance input or low impedance input uh, it depends on the input that you need and in our case because I need more gain uh, to amplify the signal coming from the receiver then uh, I need to set the impedance to high level basically so high impedance <laughs> and that's what we're going to use I'm not very far from the from the camper and also not very far from the electrical grid so we might pick up some hum basically some interferences from the electrical uh, grid but let's install this tiny receiver and uh, see if it works so here we are I uh, placed the spike into the ground not very deep as you can tell so the better the grounding the better the results that you will get with this simple receiver the audio output goes straight into the audio input of the Tascam recorder no batteries no nothing it's powered strictly by the Tascam recorder by the inputs basically and uh, I'm going to keep the recorder away so it will not pick up so much uh, from the recorder so many interferences and uh, I would recommend you to use a longer cable uh, maybe like a meter or so and uh, try to keep your recorder as far as possible from the receiver and if you still pick up interferences from the recorder try to somehow build a, some sort of metallic cage maybe um, for the for the audio recorder and try to connect that one to the ground and hopefully that will help but let me listen to whatever we are able to pick up right now with this receiver Now you might wonder why would I want to build uh, this tiny receiver if uh, this one gives me nearly identical results with the one that I built uh, before which works uh, very fine. Um, now the difference is that uh, I have two receivers for two uh, particular purposes obviously this one because it has a, an amplified signal I can connect the headphones and listen to the sounds directly maybe lay down on a, on a blanket somewhere in the grass and simply listening to the to the spherics um, now uh, it's good for recording as well and uh, it's giving me decent sound uh, output decent uh, audio output but uh, the problem is that i would have to worry about two batteries uh, one the one from the receiver even though this one uh, it lasts for quite a long time and uh, the other battery would be from the um, sound recorder as well so why bother if i can uh, get something that works without uh, a battery <laughs> so uh, this one i will keep this one for listening into the headphones and then i will use this uh, tiny one that i just built strictly for recording just because it's not using any battery at all um, again as i was saying experiment with the antennas you can connect either a telescopic antenna like the one that i have over here i think this one is about 70 centimeters 80 centimeters something like that um, or if you want you can even uh, use a long wire maybe 10 meters of wire uh, the signal would be a lot stronger just make sure to keep it away from uh, trees and um, other ob obstacles because they will influence your receiving uh, received signal and here with the banana plug uh, you can use a longer wire that uh, will connect to a proper grounding 
if you have like a special location where you know that it's permanent and uh, you will install this receiver for recordings you can probably drive a, a long uh, copper pipe or zinc pipe um, into the ground uh, to use as ground uh, proper ground and uh, if you keep that place humid uh, probably putting some water into the ground now and then or right before using the receiver it will uh, clearly improve the performance and the, the sound that you can receive with this uh, simple receiver the spike again is just a simple aluminum spike probably 30 centimeters long and this is the one that i'm using when i'm uh, doing random recordings uh, on a on the run and I don't want to spend a lot of time setting up everything. I just uh, plug it into the banana plug and uh, I'm done. So let's open it really quick and show you uh, how it looks inside. And I'm warning you, um, inside is not as pretty as it is on the outside. <laughs> just because I built everything uh, in a rush uh, trying to see if it actually works. Now let's open it really quick and have a quick look inside. Now initially I planned building the whole thing uh, dead bug style and just solder the components uh, to the connections over here and uh, I wouldn't bother too much with mechanical <laughs> stuff but uh, I had to use a piece of protoboard just because um, I had to improvise with the resistors. Um, I did not have such a high value resistor and in order to get the 44 uh, mega ohms required by the schematic which i don't think there it's a critical value but i wanted to respect the original schematic um, so i had to put a lot of resistors in series in order to get that uh, value the capacitor that i'm using is not like the one required by the schematic i think mine it's a little bit higher uh, i believe it's 618 nanofarads uh, but it should do. Uh, the value of the capacitor is not critical either. You can even put a smaller value, maybe somewhere around. Uh, um, you can try 220. You can try higher values. But I wanted to uh, use a higher value. Um, as closer as, um, <laughs> as possible to the one used in the original schematic now the transistor that i used i can't remember what transistor it is let me take it out and have a look at it i apologize for the noise oops what i did i placed one of those uh, thingies that you use for um, ic's for the integrated circuits um, so I cut a little piece with three pins in order to be able to test different other transistors uh, to see if they work with this receiver and I can't see anymore so because it's too far let me see if I can read this on this one is written K246 so I believe it's uh, 2SK246 uh, this is the transistor that I'm using. It's a, an N-channel JFET, and uh, yeah, it seems to do a good job. So I won't bother changing this one. I'm happy with the results. I'm just going to put it back and uh, <laughs> um, leave it as it is. I'm not even going to bother to make it look uh, more pretty than it is. Maybe uh, once I'm going to order some high value. Uh, resistors i'm going to replace the resistor with uh, two 22 mega ohms resistor in series and uh, use only two resistors <laughs> but uh, everything else will remain the same so the construction is very very simple it's very basic uh, just three components uh, if you count the resistor as, as one like a resistor a transistor and a capacitor and you a little bit of hardware i wanted the metallic box you can even put in a plastic box if you want or wooden box but uh, try to uh, do some uh, shielding inside maybe with some copper tape or whatever you have available then a banana plug for the grounding and a bnc or any other connector that you might want for the antenna um, maybe an RCA or anything you'd like so yeah that's it it's very simple
anyway i'm not going to waste your time uh, you can see the schematic on the screen one more time just so you have it in case you want to try building this one but i think it's great for recordings only like if you really want to do recordings it's a lot easier to only worry about one battery the one from the recorder itself uh, and if you want you can put everything in a, a weatherproof uh, uh, box and uh, probably just have a little uh, two wires going out from the box uh, somewhere on the bottom so the water doesn't get inside the box where you keep your recorder and the receiver and you have the antenna running on one side and the ground connection running into the other side and you can even record during the rain uh, even though if you have electrical discharges uh, probably it's a good idea to stay away <laughs> um, because uh, this is the perfect uh, <laughs> um, attraction for uh, lightning strikes so um, you don't want to get into any accidents so uh, yeah it's uh, really nice for recordings because uh, you just have to worry about one battery it works without any power and it's great and the results are nearly identical with uh, this receiver over here that i built before so feel free to play around even if you um you just want to try and test to see if you're into this kind of stuff vlf and uh, spherics receivers and uh, if you want to see if uh, if you find them interesting if you don't want to spend your time building something uh, a little bit more complicated you can start with something as simple as this one and you just uh, listening to the sound and as you could tell from my Tascam recorder while I'm recording I also have a um, audio output for headphones so I can listen at the same time while I'm recording if I really want to so uh, yeah anyway I'm not going to keep this video long thanks so much for watching I hope you like this simple project I wanted to do this one just because the vacation for the kids started the summer vacation and I thought maybe some of them might find this one interesting then they might want to try it since it's very simple and the components I think are pretty easy to find and recover them from older boards because all the components that I use here are recovered components from uh, older receivers so uh yeah that's it for today i'll let you listen just a little bit more uh, towards the end of the video and uh, i guess i'll see you in the next one until then thanks so much for watching and 73 from yankee oscar 6 delta x-ray echo